Any other discussion on the side? No questions. Good. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? All right. Any opposed? Carried so ordered. Uh, we move on to item eight. Discussion for possible action only at the City Council. We have a consent agenda. We have minutes from July 22nd, 2021, and bills from August 16th, 2021. I'll have to abstain from the bills because my wife is going to check in there. Okay. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the minutes? Make that motion. Motion to the here. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Any further discussion on the minutes? All in favor? Aye. Uh, 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 any opposed? Okay, it's so ordered. Item 2 for the bills for August 16th. Do I have a motion on the bills? Okay. Motion from Councilman Flankus. Do we have a second? I'll uh, second. Second from Councilman Carson. Any discussion on the bills? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Right. Any opposed? That's for eyes and one abstention. Thank you. Item B, old business. Uh, item 1, Mayor Roberts, and discussion for possible action performance evaluation of city building official Lou Walker, including but not limited to consideration of character, alleged misconduct, professional confidence, or physical or mental health. Possible action includes but is not limited to termination, suspension, demotion, reduction in pay, reprimand, promotion, endorsement, engagement, retention, or no action. Um, as the council is aware, uh, building official Walker has entered his resignation. Yes. Um, per the contract he has with the city, that's 30 days notice. Your last day is um, September 29th, I believe. September 29th. Um, and I'm told this is, as this is a personnel session, that I think can be accepted. That is correct, yeah. I think because the resignation is a result of the contractual condition, um, which could potentially lead to termination, I think his resignation as a result of that um, not meeting that condition is, okay. can be accepted. So the council can accept his resignation letter tonight, and any other action they choose to make. Um, we'll have advertisements or, or whatever course of action we need to take on next week's agenda. Um, but this will kind of move the ball down the road a little bit further. Are there any questions or comments from the council they'd like to put to? I'd like to comment. I was really hard on Lee last time, you know, and in the short period of time, the two weeks, he stepped up and put Johnny on the spot on every one of my requests. He documented the time he went and was really professional on that there. I don't know if our chit chat helped or not, but I hope this didn't push you to do this here because I think you got a future with the city, you got to realize it's brand new to you. You know, you used to saw and cut and pound the nails, so, you know, that, again, I, you know, I just felt I had to be stern, and by gosh, you took it to heart, and he, he came to task and done everything I was after, he was all over it, and thank you for your service, so. Is, is there a reason for your resignation, Mr. Chair? It's been looming on my mind for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, there is a lot to this job. I'll be the first one to admit that I didn't think Brad did a whole lot. <laughs> I'll be the first one to tell you that I was very wrong. There is so much to this job, and it's a lot. It's overbearing. Most days I don't get lunch, so I work anywhere from 9 to 10 hours a day, every day. You know? And uh, I try to be on top of everything. This last month has really been hard with Jennifer being out. and. Trying to manage the office, trying to be there when I can, trying to do inspections, you know, it, it takes a lot. Um, so my monthly report will reflect that. You'll see the calendar, it's been insane. But um, in all honesty, it, you know, you didn't push me, <coughs> you nudged me a little bit, that was good, but um, it's just not for me. I, I, I try, and I just, I, it's going to be too much, and it's, too much for me. So I'd rather go back to, and it, it makes me, my kids were noticing my my change when I get home, I bring it home with me. You know, Daddy, why are you so mad? Why are you so stressed? I, I did a lot, of, uh, within those last two weeks, I really looked at myself and said, do I want to do this job for another 30 years? Be miserable every day, <laughs> unhappy, you know? I, I do love, I do, I love this city and I wanted to help it out, but I 
just don't think I'm the right man for it. So I'm going to go back to doing what I love to do, and I'm going to go back to being a builder. We, we do appreciate uh, you taking a chance on it. Yeah. So I we wish you, you guys taking a chance on me as well. Sure. I know I didn't deliver in certain aspects, but I didn't take the test again because I didn't want to pay again. It's all the money I got to pay back anyway, and my heart wasn't in it. It's not for you guys to do that, and myself as well. So. We appreciate your understanding that. Any other comments or questions? I suppose if there's not. I haven't, I haven't met with uh, Lee after the last meeting, so I could help him a little bit, whatever he do with this. And I totally respect what you've done. Thank you so much. You know, go back to pound the nails, I guess, huh? Yeah, this was so my plan. I, I still have it in the back of my head that some some of this knowledge might be useful for down the road, especially if I go for a contractor's license as well. So I'm going to continue the education you know, as I can do it. I mean, like I said, the day-to-day -day stuff, and then does then when I get home, I'm a single father as well. So I've got three young girls to look after. I got volleyball practices. You know, there's not a lot of time for studying. I mean, I don't feel like being up till midnight, one o'clock, <laughs> and coming in that early. But I'll have a little bit more time. Like I said, I'm probably going to continue my education on that and just do it on my time frame. But that's why I'm going to do that. Um, if there are no more questions for Lee, I suppose uh, a motion would be in order to accept his letter of resignation. Is that appropriate? It's appropriate. I move to accept his resignation. Uh, motion from Councilman Spear. Do I have a second? No second. Second from Councilman Allworth. Any further discussion on the second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, we'll move on to new business. Mayor Robertson, discussion for possible action, performance evaluation of city municipal court. Municipal Judge Michael Koster, including but not limited to consideration of character, alleged misconduct, professional competence, for physical and mental health, possible action includes, but is not limited to, termination, suspension, demotion, reduction in pay, reprimand, promotion, endorsement, engagement, retention, or no action. Uh, we're doing this um, in the interest of just being uh, consistent with all city officials. And, and uh, apart from the monthly uh, report from right. the judge, this gives an opportunity for the council to ask any questions and, and kind of counsel together. I have to say, I hope that was going to get comfortable and balanced and articulate as Mr. Walker was, that was pretty awesome. Because it was just being made with various meetings, go at various times. And I missed the last meeting when they were that moment. Um, I had a chance to speak briefly with Mr. with the mayor about this and as he knows, and I think you know, my judicial conduct is supervised through the they call the administrative office of the Supreme Court for Nevada. Uh, they do the training and they take complaints and stuff like that. But there is a hundred job that has to do with administration, budget, personnel, where we've got the new facility coming online and stuff like that. So any of those topics uh, that you have thoughts on, I'd certainly like to know about. And at the risk of sounding trite, of course, I'm always available. I'd always like to talk to you. In fact, I probably, I haven't met everyone, have I, uh, personally until tonight. And uh, that and should have done that. But um, it doesn't, whether or not the city council makes an annual habit of evaluating the judge, um, I would hope that I never appear to be unavailable for comments and suggestions or questions about things that can make it more efficient or budget conscious. Having said that, uh, if you want, I'll give you a really short summary. Right? I think you probably know me well enough to know my reputation is I'm pretty, pretty, uh, as Lori Carson said, frugal. Don't say cheap, it sounds bad. Quote, unquote. Pretty cheap with government funds. Um, and I do consider that to be a successful area for us. In the four and a half years that I've been doing this, we did um, reduce the overall staff cost because we, did, we don't operate on Fridays anymore. Put a little asterisk there, so we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, we've been very conscious of taking the best of the existing furniture and equipment out of the existing courthouse over to the other, so we're able to shorten the list of new purchases and cut the budget by about 20, you know, a little over 20%. Like, like the chairs that I sit in and file cabinets and things like that that we're able to uh, continue to run, some of which are fairly comfortable. Um, and let's see. And, you know, and as well as using those special funds, you know that by statute the 
the court system has full wealth at our level has four special funds. No one of them has a balance of like six thousand dollars. Very small. One of them, the facility fund, it had a balance of seventy thousand dollars accumulated over the years, and it's for just where we are now, furnishing out courthouses. It's prohibited at the courtroom. It's prohibited that any, not so much the nickel can be spent in the judge's uh, office, that's to make sure that there's no abuses in that area, but the clerical staff area, the clerks, the courtroom, cameras, computers, things like that can go there. So we've been able to draw on that and reduce some of the direct uh, appropriated monies from this from the city. So things are looking really good, and I do take budget matters really seriously, and I'm proud of the progress we've made. I wanted to cover that. Uh, the uh, Let's see. For last year, as you know, because we already covered it a while back, we did come in under budget for our overall court operation. And I'm, again, I'm proud of that. That's important stuff to me. Um, and not to the point of ever sacrificing the work we do, but we cut back on travel. Of course, everybody cut back on travel and training last year. I think everyone's now zooming everywhere. So that helped a lot. Uh, and like I say, uh, oh, we're only one year into this year, but we're already moving below budget for this year. So things are looking good so far. And as I mentioned, the special funds for our courthouse and cutting some of the equipment in the new facility. Since the state law allows us to operate on microphones only, meaning audio record only, unlike the district courts that have that are required by law to have a camera, we deleted cameras from the county's plan so that we could uh, maintain lower cost of operation, uh, of setup and of operation. The rare times we have to have cameras because there's a witness in Carson City, usually a drug specialist, something like that. We use our own equipment to set up Zoom for that particular meeting. That happens once a month, I think, maybe twice a month at month. That didn't seem worthy of the investment to run cameras all around the course and that sort of thing. Uh, that's it for my report. I want to let you know that the legislature has been very busy. Everyone reads the paper and knows that. Uh, there are a couple things that are going to affect the operation of the court starting last uh, July 1st and running through January of 2024. And they're just conceptually, so that you'll know what they are. Traffic offenses are being decriminalized. So we don't treat them like we treat regular criminal offenses where if somebody doesn't show for court, someone doesn't pay fines. The usual sanctions that might be available to the judge tools. The city attorney here said, talk about the judge's toolbox, right? Some of those tools that we would normally use in a minor criminal matter like, tra like traffic, uh, I'm sorry, like uh, trespass and things like that, and could use for traffic cases we can no longer use. They're treating them more, more like parking tickets. So the, we can expect that the budget impact statewide and citywide will be that we're going to collect less fees. Some of the fees and fines will end up going to the collection agencies early, the collection agency that we used earlier. Second uh, point is the municipal courts are now to be prepared to conduct juries, as I mentioned earlier, and to keep it brief. I won't mention it again, but we'll, we'll talk about that again in the future, I'm sure. And then the third thing, perhaps the most disruptive one to normal weekend week out operation, is that the state has directed that starting in January of 2024, that all bond determinations be made within 48 hours of when a person is arrested. So that means that if someone gets arrested Friday at 4 o'clock, they're going to have to be seen, and that can be video, by a judge before 4 o'clock on Sunday. Now, if you're a court that doesn't operate on Friday, as it is, like us, right, then uh, there's a larger window of time where an arrest could take place, uh, where the bond determination is going to have to be made um, off hours, if you will. At the present, that involves the prosecutor typically, and it involves administrative staff out of the courts and the judge. So we're learning and we're toying with different ways. Uh, brainstorming different ideas on how to do that. That same law allows a municipal court judge or a justice of the peace, such as Judge Bishop in West Lake County, to serve in other counties. So there's a prospect that we're going to put judges on rotation and you'll have a duty weekend, if you want to call it that, every two months or something like that, where it'll be your weekend to take those calls. The law already by recent change requires that there be written determinations for someone you're going to keep in jail. But now they've shortened it from the long-standing 72 hours, meaning it's 
that's decades old, right? There's a long, long standing practice of 72 hours to 48 hours. So during the 48 hours, you have to see that person face to face. You have to know enough about their criminal record to know if they're likely to abscond or if they're a risk to the public and make a decision whether they should be held under bond or released. The whole focus, and I don't mean to be political about it, but I will be philosophical, is to get people out of jail pre-trial. It's not to hold them unless there's specific reasons to believe there's a public safety issue in, you know, if they get out on the streets again, or, or that they are not likely to present themselves when they're next supposed to be in court. Those are the two tests. So that's going to change things. I don't know if uh, Judge Abreski is going to organize something that works in the 7th Judicial District, which would be three counties, Lincoln, Eureka, and White Pine, or if it's going to be a statewide network of judges sharing this work. But there's no particular reason for 40 judges around the state, or actually two counties, County, County but 40 out there alone, at that level, uh, to all be walking around all day long on weekends with their cell phone prepared to take a video call from someone who was arrested. It's going to, it's, in some ways, it's going to modernize things. Judge uh, Bishop was interviewed by and quoted in a Las Vegas Review Journal article about the challenges, shall we say, uh, in the rural areas of meeting that 48-hour hearing requirement. Did that cover it, you think? I think so. Yeah. So we've got a year to ramp up to it fully. We're allowed to, you, they want you to start as soon as possible with the deadline of January 2024. Okay? That would be a new thing for us. Take it for all the rooms that only have, you know, one one uh, one judge on maybe a part-time schedule, you know, that sort of thing. Because if anything, some of those courts, cases courts are closing. Caliente closed, Goldfield closed. I think different places around the state have just gotten rid of their court and defer to the higher court. So we want to be able to meet the responsibilities that have been given to us, and uh, and, uh, and and of course not have a cost anymore. Right? And I, well, we definitely appreciate you coming down here uh, for this, Judge Coster. And, um, I want to certainly appreciate the, the benefit to the city of having someone who's as diligent as keeping up on these kind of issues as, as you have been and continue to be. Um, it, it certainly is a benefit to have you in that position doing that kind of work on behalf of the city and, and, and those who get seen in the court. I'm sure it's, it, it, it's really important to them as well. But, uh, is there anything the council would like to? I questions for I, I said with the budget committee when Lede came down we were with the budget it was very well presented and I appreciate your uh, not cheap what was the word for real for real that's Lori Carson okay and I like that one question I, I can't remember was in the budget are you getting uh, office rent we have to pay the county for your new building up there with your little stall we don't get it or pay it my understanding is that the long-standing agreement between the city and the county is, in summary form, city provided the land long ago, county provides the courtroom. Okay, thank you. Note that it is, it's listed as a shared courtroom. So while there's no specific plans now, it may be that the juvenile court starts using that courtroom on Friday, because they only convene on Fridays, and we are closed on Fridays, so it's a, a match made in heaven, so to speak. Uh, but there's been no specifics given to us. So we don't have exclusive room in that courtroom, but we have print, we have primary use of that courtroom. Okay, thank you. Thank Good you. Job. Good job. Any other questions or comments from the council? Okay, then if there's no budgets, I'm going to save the best for last, because if I got fired, I probably wouldn't say this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but Linnea and Lisa, who work in this office, are among the absolute best clerical I've worked with in my 35 years of being a lawyer. They are really dedicated, very good with the public. They coordinate between themselves at about the highest level you could envision. Things seldom surface to me other than we're going to do this or we've made this change or we, you know, those files are already with you because their coordination is clockwork class. I'm really blessed to have that. Um, Linnea has been out a little bit on leave lately and almost without so much of a hiccup, they're filling in, they fill in for one another. Their organization is good and their public image is really superb. So I'm, uh, they make it easy to do this job. And I want to I have to thank them because I would be stumbling along at a, at a lower success rate if it wasn't for the really good work they do. Uh, I know that, again, that's something everyone likes to say to one degree or another, but 
I've never said it more seriously. Uh, and the other thing that I want to thank you, because it's an honor to do this. Every lawyer uh, thinks about the pros and cons of whether they'll ever have a chance to be a judge or have an interest in being a judge. Uh, and uh, while it is a part-time judge position in a lower body of court, uh, it is at my stage, at elite stage in my career, it's really an honor to be able to do it. I enjoy it very much. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you both. Thank you all. If there's any action uh, the council proposes to take, we can do that. Um, but if not, we'll move on to item two. Item two, Mayor Roberts, in discussion for possible action, retroactive approval of support letter for Hindu Shoshone tribes application for federal funding under the National Telecommunications and Information Administration's Tribal Broadband Connectivity Board. That was a spring program for broadband infrastructure. Uh, they had a deadline to meet and use this letter, so I made the decision not to. Did they say how much funding they were seeking? Uh, they did not. They did not. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to approve. I'll make a motion from Council and Spear, second from Council and Oliver. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. 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 Uh, item 3, Councilman Spear, Councilman Albert, discussion only, update on quarter group efforts on behalf of the city. Uh, <laughs> I was the one there. Actually, it was a pretty, pretty short meeting uh, with the Congress being on, on vacation. I think they are on the time anyway. Uh, so we did talk about a couple things. One of them was, the, uh, we got the letter about the uh, possibility to not find funding for, for this kind of permanent uh, daycare center here, and they were they misunderstood that the facility is in town and all of the need renovation and some rental fit and playground stuff if they were to get that. And so they, they are working to try to find help and support to get us a daycare. So that would be exciting. I haven't talked to, I haven't talked to Savannah, I don't know, Samantha, he's a, my granddaughter, and the way the girls kind of told her where we were at that, but that's about all of we're hoping for, hoping for the three we asked for. It looks like it's still going kind of good. So our next meeting will be the owner of the city council meeting. Thirty. Okay. That's it. Okay. Any questions or anything out there? No. Okay. Good job. Then. We'll move on to item four. Uh, I will hand that over to Mayor Pro Tem Williams Harper. Councilman Allworth, a discussion or for possible action, approval to loan at 0% interest or donate $144,987.12 to the City of Ely American Rescue Plan Fund to the Nevada Northern Railway, Railway Foundation and NRY in order to restore the track between the White Pine Public Museum and the Nevada Northern Railway Museum prior to, is that Q? Yeah. Q and D construction paving in, in place uh, September 2021. And NRY allowed this track to be pulled up for the Nevada Department of Transportation's NDOT sewer project due to being awarded NDOT TAP grant 0033 parentheses 017, NDOT 74285, funds for which are not available at this time. Okay, thank you. Good job, Green Man. As, uh, you know, we threw this uh, out there on the agenda, and I'd, I'd like to thank Jennifer for getting Paige out of the, out of the ARPA guidelines. And I truly believe that this could be funded through that, that funding of the ARP, ARP, whatever you want to call it, you know, okay. it, you know, aid provided for tourism, aid to plan expansion and upgrade of tourism. So I, I, I believe that the work we have, Cameron and the general, uh, Robert Hubert, they're looking at it also, but I believe it'll, it'll go through that process there without a glitch. And, uh, Mark had wrote a letter on too. If you want to get up and do a sales pitch on it, I think that'd be helpful too. Because we're in a time crunch right now. Two of these will start asphalting quite shortly. And 144,000 Mark's got a quote from a company that would do that. So I'll let 
hard to take so there's a while. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we did receive uh, what they call a camp grant to restore the track between the White Pine Public Museum and the Nevada Northern Railway Museum. Uh, we actually wrote that grant and it was approved by the City Council in 2019. Uh, and as part of that project, when CUNY did start the sewer project, they had two different ways of doing it. They could have excavated directly next to our tracks, which would mean that they'd have to put the metal plates, or we could take the tracks out, and then they could just excavate a large ditch, put the sewer in, and then we would put the tracks on top of that. As part of the agreement is they would grade the new right-of-way to the grade that we specify, and then also as part of that agreement, they would then, we would put the track in place, and then they would pay the track in place, so the street only has to be torn up once. Well, now it's a matter of timing. They're ready to pay, and we're not ready with the grant yet, so that's the rock and a hard place. We do, if we don't put the track in when they're ready to pay, then we have to take out the street freshly paved streets, most likely next spring or summer. So that's why we're here. The, uh, I, read, I read all this through, and, and I think planning is kind of paramount here, without a doubt. If we want to put that in there for a long time, but if you go through all this park stuff, and everything comes from a, there's a, every bit of it says that if there's a, U.S. Treasury Department, and there's a number of people who get to pre-approve this, denies this, then the city has to refund the entire amount of money to the U.S. Treasury. What I would like to see on this is I'd like to, I'd like to see us move forward on this with a 0% loan. You talked about this tax grant. Is that possible to come to that that's going to happen? Well, the, 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 it might have finally become available, so what would happen is that we funded 145000 which I'm totally in favor of doing. Mm -hmm. And then we get that money. Is the city, I think it's best to have a loan. What would you do with the tap money? The tap money was specific for that track too, right? Well, right. The tra tap money is specific for that grant too. And again, I, I did that grant in 2019. Well, as we all know, prices have gone up since 2019, and, and we're going to stretch that money as far as we possibly can. If the city were to do this as a grant, that would allow us not to stretch the dollar quite as far. But again, I understand both ways. I just want to get the track in before they pay for the street. Well, I, I do too, right? You go down there, and that's the only time you're going to have no kidding nobody. That's probably never going to be built, afford to be put back in. Once that new street's there, once all that stuff is there, I mean, it, now is when it's got to happen. I just want to make sure the city's protected on the U.S. Treasury. But I, I think we should, uh, 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 I'm not totally don't make a loan and no interest and maybe no payments for a while until we see what comes up. But I think we need to fund that project out of ARPA. That's my thought on it. Okay, I guess I'm confused, Ed. You're saying a loan or you want to go through ARPA. ARPA, we just spend $145,000 we're done with this. And a loan, you know, you're going to have to get into uh, bond council, I think, because it's over $100,000, medium term. You know, I'm, I'm still be, saying use the ARPA money, but is it? But, but you said a loan does not, not going to have no interest at all. It's yeah. ARPA. It's just, we said But if it comes back, who's going to get that? comes back to the U.S. Treasury, and that's pretty vague. I've been through all. 41 pages on that Trump tourism grant, and that's about the only place that's due to the pandemic. And it was kind of due to the pandemic because the state went out of the funding, right? May I address your concern, and maybe this would make you feel more comfortable? Uh, I believe that the foundation would agree to, if you wanted to make this a grant, and then the federal government came back to the city of Ely and said, eh, it's not a grant, then the foundation would reimburse the city of Ely. It's all I need to hear. $141,000. Good. That makes me happy. That makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm really happy that Ed's happy, so I'll make a motion that it's appropriate. Yes, it will. Need a motion? I'll, I'll make a motion. We uh, fund this project using uh, ARPA 
Harpa? They are American Rescue Plan. Thank you. Well, there you go. The American Rescue Plan Fund. And we'll go with that with the stipulation. If we were to come back to the federal government, we we'll be this mark with the tax money on that. There's one question on that tax grant. You wrote that in 2019. You had no idea this was even going to be out there. No, not really. So you'll be able to use that Sunday. Oh, yes. Exactly. We'll, we'll go in a quick hurry because Cameron and the general work on this also. Sure. Okay, so that's my motion to fund it with the American Rescue Plan Fund. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. I have five councilmen all worth discussion for possible action review of city police chiefs and the city engineer's recommendations in regards to installations, installation of yield course stop signs at the following locations based upon traffic studies, 8th Street and Avenue N, 12th Street and Avenue L, 12th Street and Avenue K, and 12th Street and Park Avenue, and possible direction that a public hearing be held prior to council's final action to install said signs. Mayor, Council, um, hope everybody got, everybody got the statistics that I sent out and then my recommendations. Um, I sent all those to BJ too. Um, so as we go through these, if you want to make comments to BJ, I appreciate it. So the first one that we can look at is the uh, Avenue N and 8th Street that we did. One of the things that B, BJ and I kind of emailed each other back and forth was the volume of traffic that was there. And I did indicate in the bottom of, of the letter that I sent to you that I think that the study was probably somewhat misconstrued because of all the construction that's going on um, in front of uh, basically Great Basin. I think a lot of people were using that to divert around, especially when it came to like the gym use and things of that nature. I think that those numbers were exceedingly, um, but there again, I don't know that. I mean, if the council wants to redo that speed study later on, then maybe we can get some better accurate figures because when I pulled those figures and I've seen 2,736 vehicles go through there in one week, that's a lot of vehicles. And so that would, in my opinion, warrant some type of traffic control device there. But talking to BJ too, he, he had the same impression, I think, we're using that as an alternate route, and so maybe once that job is completed, maybe towards the end of October, first part of November, we can come back and do this one again. Sure, I I use that road a lot. You know, before the construction even started, during school startup, I go up to the gym up there. You cannot get across that street to get it. it. It's used heavily even prior to the detours and so forth. Gotcha. So do you think that number is, is accurate? That I, I think it's probably a little bit high because where I live that there's a lot of people using 8th Street a lot now to get away from all this construction. But I think, I definitely believe there's a stop sign needed there. Okay. My only question is, would it be on 8th Street going up and coming down? That's where the stop sign would be. So the traffic going on end would not be impeded. It's gonna, it, because that's, that's the route they're taking to get to school faster too. Right. Yeah, and that's why I actually put it on, on uh, Avenue N going east and west. Because that would deter people and have them going in instead? Yeah, you know, possibly. Because yeah. I've also spent a lot of time at this intersection. Right. <laughs> right. Probably 30 some odd years of my life at this intersection. People so. take the most direct route. Yeah. Sure. That's what it was. I mean, yeah. they usually won't skip a stop sign to go around the block and come around because then it just even takes them long. So, so just to be clear, you're talking about putting it in the direction of travel on N or the direction of travel on A? Yeah. Yeah. The, the week of that, the week that, that study was up was the week that Avenue Man was closed and they were pulling out of there. And so, it, my guess when they closed that entrance off of Great Basin Boulevard. The, date, the dates of his thing, Avenue Man was closed at Great Basin Boulevard because they were out of there. So, I think that's pretty so putting it on the end will slow the traffic down because they got to stop. Okay, I like that idea. Well, and I, there, there's also traffic coming out of JM trucking from there. And I know that I've personally been caught by a big truck coming out of there, and I have to watch other people do that. I'm sure it is high. It, it does. I, that intersection does get used. 
just a thing where it would seem someone would guess just by looking at yeah, it. I mean, if, if you just drive up there and look at it, you're kind of like, why are people even coming here? You know? <laughs> but it's just like Jim said, especially now with the schools going on, um, I think that the traffic is probably increasing. It's up to the council. I mean, we can definitely look at it again if you think the, the numbers just don't seem right. Um, you know, it's up to you guys. I think I would support the council also doing a, um, a public hearing on that, like you suggest here. I don't think that's a bad idea at all. Well, I think it's, we can always take a sign up, and there's a lot of traffic up there. We're, we're seeing it on, on G, I mean, I'm on the G, too, and that's just absolutely crazy the different traffic. And they're not even stopping there at that stop sign because once they've heard it, that uh, this road is closed to through traffic. A little stop sign, they don't even pay attention because there's nobody coming. Um, so I'm totally in favor of installing that sign up there <coughs> and coming back to look at it later. But if you want, uh, it says on here we can have it if you want to do it. We'll be carrying on as well. But well, what about these other intersections? Um, okay, let's look at um, Avenue L, 12th Street. Um, went down there and looked at that one. The numbers are just moderate. We have 666 vehicles go through that intersection. Um, the speed percentage was extremely low, um, so I didn't make any recommendations on changing that intersection. Yeah, the traffic counts are low. I don't. There are some intersections I can, I can support the yield sign coming in here, but the yield signs on 12 are the ones going down 12, and not necessarily away from the school. So let the traffic get away from the school and put the yield sign on some of these things coming too low. I mean, the traffic counts are very low. You know, Mr. Miller said, shared some comments in during public comment on some of the concerns he had. So, council can kind of take his concerns to consideration. And, and one of the other things that's always considered looking at some of this stuff is when I look at it, I, I take it back from this council, I take it back straight to traffic standards and everything else are recommendations. And one of the things that they're always checking at is accidents. They're always asking the sheriff, is there any accidents in the intersection? And there's been no accidents in the last seven years in the intersection. Oh, they are. Oh, they are. They work in that right now. So, you have to be close to it. Come on. All right, so um, I, I take these traffic counts, I run through um, traffic standards, wherever, looking at for signs of what the recommendations are. And one of the things that comes out of there is a history of accidents. And so I always ask the sheriff for any accidents. And he has had no accidents in these intersections. Can I just ask Bill? What's your comment, Bill? With Bill? I know you give public comment. Do you feel, since you're the one I have a concern right now, a yield sign would satisfy it? Or have you seen something that our officials have not seen? No, I, the last few years, Jim, I spent a lot of time in that neighborhood. I really do. Um, but I talked to the gentleman that lives right next door, Mr. Robinsato, um, and I asked him to attend today, and, and he did, and he must have other things. But one thing that I see there that really scares me, and I've seen it numerous times, and I explained, kind of described the situation to him, that is kind of set up as a figure eight pattern on a demolition derby. And why I make that statement is, is uh